ಕೊಡ ಚಿಂತನೆ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವಿ ವರ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿರೈವ್ ದ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಚೋಕಿಂಗ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಟೂ ಫೇಸಸ್ ಸೆಪರೇಟ್ಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅಸ್ಯೂಮ್ಡ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ದ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಒನ್ ಗೋ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ದಿ ಹೋಲ್ ಡೆರಿವೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ದಿ ಅಪ್ರೋಪ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿಫಿಕೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೆನ್ ನೆಸೆಸರಿ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಫಾಲೋ ಫಾಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡನ್ ಟಿಲ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಫೈಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಫಾಟ್ ವಿ ಡಿಡ್ ವಿ ಫೈನಲಿ ಅರೈವ್ಡ್ ಆಟ್ ಅ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಟೂ ಓಕೆ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ವೇ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಡೌನ್ ಅ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಡೌನ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಯು ಫಾಟ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಗೆಟ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಡಿ ಪಿ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ರೋ ಒನ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ಬೈ ಎ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಫೋರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಡಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಇಸಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರೈಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಡೌನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಡಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಎ ಡಿ ಎ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಆಲ್ಫಾ ಡಿ ಆಲ್ಫಾ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ರೋ ಒನ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಡಿ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ರೋ ಒನ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದೀಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಟಿ ಐ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಟಿ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರೈಟ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಡಿ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ರೋ ಒನ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ವಿ ವುಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ರೋ ಒನ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಡಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ರೋ ಒನ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ಬೈ ಎ ಡಿ ಎ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ರೋ ಟು ಸಾರಿ ರೋ ಒನ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಆಲ್ಫಾ ಡಿ ಆಲ್ಫಾ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಸಿ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಫೇಸಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಟೂ ಫೇಸಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಸೈನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ಲೆಂಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಕೋಪ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಟು ಡೂ ಕೇರ್ಲೆಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೆಂಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಕೋಪ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಕಟ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡ ಐ ಎಲಾಬೊರೇಟೆಡ್ ದಿ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ದಟ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಡೂ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಲೈಂಡ್ಲಿ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಬ್ಲೈಂಡ್ಲಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಕಾಮನ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದೇ ಫೋರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ವೇ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರೈಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಡೌನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲುಕ್ ಔಟ್ ಫರ್ ದರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿ ಮಿಸ್ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಡಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಎ ಡಿ ಎ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಆಲ್ಫಾ ಡಿ ಆಲ್ಫಾ ಡಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ರೋ ಒನ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ರೋ ಒನ್ ಜಿ ಸೈನ್ ಥೀಟಾ ದೆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಮೈನಸ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಎಫ್ ಒನ್ ಟು ಮೈನಸ್ ಎಫ್ ಡಬ್ಲ್ಯೂ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಆಲ್ಫಾ ಫೈ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಎಫ್ ಒನ್ ಟು ವಾಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಟು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್
there is one F12, if you see the F12 plus FW2, here you have got a rho g sin theta, here also you have got a rho 2 and rho 1 g sin theta, then in this particular case you have got a da dz term and in this particular case also you have got a da dz term. What is extra here? Extra in this particular case which you get is number one the effects of phase change dx dz terms and the other one is dx dz then eta all these terms and the additional degree of freedom which is introduced by alpha. Other than that if you find if you compare this with single component compressible flows where we had performed a one dimensional steady state analysis remember that we have done for all the cases. So, if we compare this we find that in that particular case also we had something like the frictional component where the frictional component comprised of only the wall shear stress. In this particular case, we also have a frictional component which comprises of both the wall shear stress as well as your um, interaction between phase 1 and phase 2. Then we also have some additional terms which came up because phase change occurred. Here also in, in this particular transparency or in this particular presentation, we have got some particular gravitational component, we have an identical gravitational component here. Here we have some area change term, in this particular case also we have an area change term. What extra we have? Effects of phase change and effects of your uh, the additional degree of freedom introduced by alpha. Okay. So, from this particular see this expression and this expression, if you see the left hand side except for alpha this 1 by alpha d alpha dz all the excepting for this alpha more or less all the other terms they are free of alpha or in other words they will not change with any particular parameter of two phase flow. For on what they depend? They depend on area change, they depend on physical properties and so on and so forth, is not it? So, therefore, from here just as I was discussing uh, in the last class that we can get the condition of choking for phase 2, we can get the condition of choking for phase 1. Where the problem starts? The problem starts that this alpha it keeps on adjusting itself. So, that just now if you simply add up the two equations, we, we will not get the condition of compound choking because there, there is going to be an alpha variable and this alpha variable it will be adjusting itself according to d alpha dz and therefore, we unless we can eliminate this d alpha dz, we cannot arrive at the condition of choking. Now, just observe these two equations and tell me how to eliminate d alpha dz from this equation and from this equation. If we eliminate that and then if we add the two equations, then probably we can arrive at a condition of compound choking. So, what we have to do? You have to multiply the first equation with alpha, the second equation with 1 minus alpha and then we can add the two equations. Let us do that and let us see what we are going to get for that particular case. Once we can do it, it is expected that we can arrive at the condition of compound choking for that particular case. Okay. So, let us do this particular addition and then let us write it down and then let us see what are the things that we are going to get. So, for that particular case, the thing which we are going to get is minus dp dz alpha by we are just multiplying one equation by this, this will be equal to alpha by x dx dz minus alpha by a da dz minus d alpha dz plus alpha by rho 2 u 2 square again rho 2 g sin theta plus whatever was there inside that will remain intact u 2 minus u 1 g d x d z fine. Same way the other equation this was for we are doing phase 2 first because it has alpha x. So, we have to write less in that particular case. In this particular equation for phase 1, what do we get? To 1 minus alpha by rho 1 u 1 square into 1 minus u 1 square by a 1 square 
this is equal to minus 1 minus alpha by 1 minus x. Do it very carefully, you can come instead of looking from me, you can write down from the expression which you have derived in your notebook that will be easier for you. <coughs> Plus 1 minus alpha by rho 1 u 1 square rho 1 g sin theta just like I had got in the previous sorry this is minus f 1 2 minus f w 1 plus 1 minus eta by 1 minus alpha u 2 minus u 1 g d x d z. Okay? So, therefore, so this is for phase 1, which one? Ah, sorry, 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 by 1 minus alpha, very true, this alpha, this alpha will be cancelling out at the end, very true, thank you very much, this is 1 minus alpha, true, okay. So, and finally, this 1 minus alpha, alpha will cancel here also, alpha, alpha cancels out, okay. Now, if we add the 2, simply after this, we can add the 2 equations, this term will get cancelled out minus d alpha d z plus d alpha d z, it cancels out, is not it? And then what do you get in this particular case? Minus d p d z alpha by rho 2 u 2 square 1 minus u 2 square by a 2 square plus 1 minus alpha by rho 1 u 1 square, 1 minus u 1 square by a 1 square, this whole thing, this will be equal to, first <coughs> if you start adding this alpha d a d z and here also we have 1 minus alpha d a d z. So, therefore, alpha plus 1 minus alpha, it becomes d a d z. Okay? So, by, by adding up this particular term and this particular term, we get minus 1 by a d a d z, correct? Same thing if you take the rho 2 j, this particular term, this g sin theta and if you take this particular term. So, then in that case what do you get? Plus g sin theta you can take as common and this is alpha by u 2 square plus 1 minus alpha by u 1 square, correct? Plus f 1 2 if you take 1 by rho 2 u 2 square minus 1 by rho 1 u 1 square, agreed? Plus f w 2 by rho 2 u 2 square plus f w 1 by rho 1 u 1 square plus whatever d x d z terms you have. There is one d x d z term here, everything concerning d x d 1 and this is the other thing. And again this is one d x d z, this is another d x d z. So, we can combine, fine. We have written the d a d z terms, we have written the g sin theta terms, we have written f 1 2 terms, we have written f w 2, we have written f w 1. Now, remaining is the d x d z terms. Okay? So, therefore, this plus d x d z into alpha by x minus 1 minus alpha by 1 minus x plus g u 2 minus u 1, 1 minus eta rho 1 u 1 square plus eta rho 2 u 2 square. Agreed? So, therefore, th this has come to two pages, we have this particular equation, this left hand side equals to this whole right hand side. Now, you tell me from this particular expression, what will be your condition of choking under the present case? What is the condition of choking? Again, in the same way, if you consider, we find that 
the term which is associated with DPDZ <coughs> that will go as the denominator and therefore, this term when I make this equal to 1 then it becomes sorry this term becomes equal to 0 because this corresponds to 1 minus MATP square. So, this term equal to 0 corresponds to my case of the condition of compound choking agreed. So, therefore, if you can tell me <coughs> what is the condition of compound choking this is alpha by rho 2 u 2 square into 1 minus if you just see your the term attached to your pressure gradient you are going to get it minus u 1 square by a 1 square. This was the term which was attached with the pressure gradient term. Okay. So, therefore, if this particular term this term this is this is nothing but 1 minus m a t p square is not it and this a 1 minus m a t p square equal to 0 gives you the condition of choking. So, therefore, this term when it becomes equal to 0 it should give you the condition of compound choking. So, therefore, condition of compound choking is this is equal to 0. <coughs> now, look at this particular expression which I have got. Now, in this particular expression if you see alpha 1 minus alpha both are positive quantities yes or no rho 1 rho 2 can they ever be negative u 1 u 2 they cannot be negative. So, therefore, something something plus something if it has to be equal to 0 then how to adjust for that only the terms in the parenthesis they can only be all, all other factors since it is positive. So, only the terms in the parenthesis they can be adjusted to give us the condition of compound choking. So, from here you can very well understand when we will have compound choking for the case of your uh, from the two fluid model when one of them is less than 0 the other of them is greater than 0. So, that they cancel out one another and they give us the condition of compound choking. So, therefore, now can you tell me when we are going to have the compound choking as derived from the two fluid model or for, for the separated flow of two phases. When this particular term yeah this is nothing but m a 2 square this is nothing but m a 1 square correct. So, therefore, we can have compound choking when m a 2 square less than 1 m a 1 square greater than 1 or m a 2 square greater than 1 m a 1 square less than 1. Only under that con condition under that condition we are going to have. So, therefore, if both of them are either both of them have to be equal to 0 definitely under that condition we are going to have choking. So, therefore, one thing is for sure when both the phases are flowing under choked flow conditions definitely we are going to have compound choking this is for sure okay. both the terms are individually equal to 0. Otherwise, if one is supersonic the other is subsonic or vice versa we can have the condition of choking. But provided what are the things that we have assumed here again neglecting flashing number 1 and the number 2 if you notice this equation you are going to find out. First thing is I have neglected the dx dz terms I have assumed dx dz to be constant okay. for flashing again in the same way this x will be a function of h and p. This is first assumption the other thing is I have assumed f 1 2 also to be independent of your pressure gradient. This is more or less a reasonable assumption, but I have assumed that the interaction between the two phases they are independent of the pressure. Okay. So, therefore, this gives you the condition of compound choking <coughs> assuming or considering 
f 1 2 and d x d z to be independent of pressure gradient. Under this condition we have got the condition of compound shooting. Now tell me for flashing what is going to happen? For flashing suppose we consider flashing then in that case what happens? For that particular case we can write x is a function of enthalpy as well as pressure, is not it? Or in other words d x d z just like I had written down in the previous place constant p plus del x del p at constant h sorry sorry this is d h d z this will be d p d z. Same thing we had done and here this what is this term del x del h at constant p or in other words del h del x at this is equal to 1 by lambda 1 by h, h 1 2 we call it very correct. This is 1 by h 1 2 ok. So, therefore, this reduces to 1 by h 1 2 d h d z plus del x del p at constant h d p d z agreed. So, therefore, instead of this particular d x d z we can write it down as 1 by h 1 2 1 by h 1 2 d h d z plus del x del p at constant h d p d z yes or no. So, for flashing what happens this term along with this it will go to the d p d it is going to be attached with d p d z and that entire thing will come out as the condition of flashing do you understand. So, therefore, for flashing in presence of <laughs> for flashing we find that they, we are going to introduce two terms one is 1 by h 1 to d h d z the other is del x del p at constant h d p d z ok. Now, the thing is we can find out del x del p at constant h and if the thermodynamic path is known is not it. Once we know that in what particular path we are going to affect the phase change we, we can find out this particular term. Okay. So, this this can be evaluated if thermodynamic path is known is not it. So, therefore, this particular expression finally, for the condition of flashing uh, under the condition of flashing the condition of compound choking what it is going to be we will just attach this particular term this del x del p at constant h into this whole term will come as the exponent or will come on the left hand side with minus d p d z and this whole thing will be equal has to be equal to 0 agreed. So, if you just just do it and then you find it out we find we, we shall be noting that this will give us something like the condition of choking in presence of flashing this will be for then alpha by rho 2 u 2 square. 1 minus u 2 square by a 2 square, 1 minus alpha by rho 1 u 1 square, 1 minus u 1 square by a 1 square minus del x del p constant h into alpha by x minus 1 minus alpha by 1 minus x plus g u 2 minus u 1 1 minus eta by rho 1 u 1 square plus eta by rho 2 u 2 square this has to be equal to 0. Do you agree with me yes or no? Yes or no do you agree with me? So, 
in presence of in absence of flashing your condition of choking is given by this particular expression and in presence of flashing your condition of choking is given by this particular expression being equal to 0. So, we find that in presence of flashing your choking should depend on the value of eta. This is a problem because eta also we are not very confident how we are going to define it. Usually from thermodynamic analysis that is quite an elaborate analysis probably I will not be going through this, but from that particular analysis people have found out that eta equals to half. Okay, so, usually it is shared half and half by the two phases, but that comes under certain specific assumptions from thermodynamic analysis for isentropic conditions only. For other conditions it is very difficult to derive eta. Okay. Under isentropic conditions for change of phase we find eta equals to half or in other words this particular force which is required to bring about a phase change is shared equally by the two phases. Okay. So, we find that in presence of flashing the condition of choking is a function of eta except just look at the expression and tell me under fourth condition choking will be independent of eta under flashing conditions. Is it clear to all of you what I want from you? You just look at this particular expression, the expression which I have written down and tell me that under fourth conditions choking will be independent of eta for flashing conditions. when this particular term this disappears off, is not it? When this particular term disappears off it is going to happen. Now, definitely g cannot be equal to 0, u 2 cannot be equal to u 1. So, therefore, what can happen? Ex only your rho 1 u 1 square can be equal to rho 2 u 2 square. Under that condition 1 minus eta plus eta cancels out. Clear to all of you? So, therefore, Condi just remember this thing condition of choking in presence of flashing depends on eta except when rho 1 u 1 square equals to rho 2 u 2 square except for this condition it depends on your it depends on eta correct. So, now I would like to deal with one another type of another type of very simple situation ok. See whenever we find that two phases they are accelerating through a nozzle even for a single phase is accelerating through a nozzle. Okay. We, we have good amount of fluid in, in say any particular uh, the stationary tank and then we have a nozzle connected to this. So, the fluid flows through the nozzle a converging type of nozzle. Now, for that particular so, so situation which are going to be the dominating forces. Normally, the forces we have are gravitational forces, frictional forces and acceleration pressure gradient is not it. Now, for normal circumstances when it is a vertical pipe we know that for even for single phase flow we know that the gravitational pressure gradient is important. When it is a horizontal pipe we know the frictional pressure gradient is important. Now, when it is flowing through a nozzle say a horizontal nozzle from a stationary tank it is flowing through a horizontal no nozzle and that, that condition which particular pressure gradient or component is going to be important can you tell me? acceleration it is neither the gravitational nor the frictional <coughs> pressure gradient. So, under such circumstances when in so in under the such circumstances what happens if we take up the basic equation of the moment the basic momentum balance equation which I had written down no, no this yeah yeah this is the equation the basic momentum balance equation this is the basic momentum balance equation I believe yeah. 
So, if we look at the basic momentum balance equation under this condition, what do we find? There are just two phases which are flowing through a nozzle. So, under that particular condition, there is no change of phase. So, dx dz terms cancel out from both the cases, yes or no. Okay? And since acceleration pressure under these, these particular circumstances more or less the phases they do not interact, this interaction between the phases is not very important, neither is the interaction with the walls very particular important, correct. If it is a horizontal nozzle then naturally this gravitational components also, also disappear off. So, under that condition what remains your minus dp dz equals to this, minus dp dz equals to this. Okay. So, therefore, you find out that your equation of motion becomes very simple under this particular condition. For a what happens? So, th so this is inertia dominant cases. Okay. So, for inertia inertial dominant cases what do we get? So, for this case what did we get from here rho 1 u 1 du 1 dz equals to minus dp dz. Similarly, rho 2 u 2 du 2 dz equals to minus dp dz. Let us write down these two terms what do we get? We get minus dp dz equals to rho 1 u 1 du 1 dz. This is equal to rho 2 u 2 du 2 dz. Yes or no? Correct? And now, in this particular case, suppose see what I have said, we start from a stationary tank. What is the initial velocity then? The initial velocity of fluid 1, fluid 2? It is 0, is not it? And then under such circumstances, if we assume that more or less rho 1, rho 2, they also remain constant. So, under such circumstances, we find there is a particular relationship between the final velocities of the two fluids. Definitely, even if they start from the same initial velocity, their final velocities are not going to be the same. Okay. Now, what is the relationship? Can you can you simply derive from from the equation of uh, the momentum equation that we have uh, uh, we have written down in this particular case? Now, this was again I'll write down the the assumption so that you don't forget. Same thing. Please write down these assumptions in your exam. Otherwise, steady state sorry steady state one dimensional flow without phase change. Under this particular condition if phase change would have been there then we could not have written such a simple equation. So, this is this equation has been written under the conditions of steady state one dimensional flow without phase change such that the f's are 0 the g term the g containing terms are also equal to 0 agreed. So, therefore, we have obtained this particular equation. Now, assuming say u 1 i initial this is equal to very low velocity 0 u 2 i equals to 0. So, therefore, with all these and rho 1 rho 2 equal to constant. So, therefore, under that circumstance it is very easy to uh, integrate this particular equation, is not it? So, under that particular situation what do we get? We simply get minus d p equals to rho 1 u 1 d u 1, right? This is equal to rho 2 u 2 d u 2, very correct. This is say from p 1 to p 2 or delta p, agreed? this will be from 0 to u 1 final, you can write it down. This will again be 0 to u 2 final, we can write it down. So, just if you perform the integration, what do we get? We get <laughs> delta p, this is equal to rho 1 u 1 final square by 2, which is equal to rho 2 u 2 final square by 2. Agreed? So, how are these final velocities, how are these fi the final velocities of the two fluids related 
after flowing through the nozzle assuming that they had started with a very low initial velocity they were almost at rest and the flow was occurring under steady state one dimensional flow conditions without any phase change or without much interaction between Na normally under this circumstances wall interactions we can neglect even for single phase flow situations as well ok. So, therefore, under that particular situation what can we write down? We can write down so under this situation u 1 final by u 2 final equals to can we write this down yes or no. So, therefore, we find that the final velocities after expansion they depend upon their densities. This is a very simplified assumption that very simplified derivation we have got with a lot of assumptions, but more or less under normal circumstances they are they give us more or less appropriate results ok. So, therefore, we find that under conditions of starting with very low velocity and all the other assumptions that I have already stated we find that the final velocity of phase 1 and phase 2 they depend upon the or uh, they are in the inverse ratio of the densities of the two phases. Now, since we know that rho 1 is much much suppose it is an air water mixture rho 1 will be much much greater than rho 2 and therefore, finally what we find u 2 f will be much greater than u 1 f even if it is under separated flow conditions also we find that the two velocities will be much different even when we assume that the pressure gradient across them is the same just because of the densities this difference is <coughs> going to occur. But of course, remember one thing this expression this has really no universal validity and it is primarily true only under conditions this is true only under conditions of rapid expansion at low Mach number this is important. Just because at low Mach number only we can assume rho 1 rho 2 to be independent or rather uh, uh, rho 1 rho 2 to be constant and independent of pressure ok and only under that condition we can assume this particular case. So, after this more or less what are the things we have completed? We have completed the we at first started with the two fluid model we performed the equation or rather we wrote down the equation of continuity, we wrote down the equation of momentum for the two phases then we combined them in several ways. From the combined equation what we did we found out the condition of choking. After finding out the condition of choking we found that the, that the results can be misleading under certain conditions particularly because del alpha del p this is usually derived for low to moderate pressures where friction dominates inertia ok. So, therefore, after that what we did we considered the two phases separately, but of course, we also considered the change of phase just to keep the matters much more generalized. Then from there we derived the equation of momentum for the two phases separately and then we combined them. Then we derived the condition of choking under these conditions and we derived the condition both in presence of flashing and in absence of flashing. The only thing which is left after this is the, the hitch which was there if we consider the basic equation which we had already written down the basic momentum combined momentum equation where we had I do not have it at the moment where we had found out that the only unknowns in that particular, particular expression was the frictional pressure gradient. And the dependence of alpha with z or with pressure gradient ok. So, these were the two things that had to be found out. Usually there are several empirical approaches for finding this out in presence of or rather in absence of certain better techniques. So, we would be going through those particular you know, whatever empirical expressions are available and we will be doing them accordingly, but before we start that today I would like to do a problem for you. I would just like to specify a problem based on the simplest thing that we have studied till now that is flow of an air water mixture through a nozzle. Just based on that I would just like to discuss a problem simply to show you 
how flexible or how much depends upon the design of two phase systems ok. Just to show you that I would like to do a problem and in the next class we will be discussing the different methods of evaluating the frictional pressure gradient and the void fraction for two phases to be in separated flow condition ok. Now let us take up the problem. Now say we have a very large tank ok and in this particular tank from this particular tank air and water mixture they are flowing out ok. From a very large tank air water mixture is there in this particular tank and it is air water mixture flowing from a large tank through a nozzle. Now, the flow rates they are more or less and this particular this this final diameter that is 6 centimeter square ok. The nozzle more or less it is the, the diameter uh, sorry the cross sectional area is 6 centimeter square ok. A equals to 6 centimeter square and the flow rates I have the flow rates your Q air or Q 2 this is equal to 0 0.04 meter cube per second, Q 1 will be equal to it is 4.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter cube per second ok. So, this is all of what you are required to find out, you are required to find out 1 pressure in the tank. and 2 you are required to find out the exit velocity that means u 1 f and u 2 f. These are the two things you are required to find out ok and pressure in the tank that means P initial. Achha, one more thing is given, given that is the exit pressure is atmospheric pressure. So, therefore, this discharges at atmospheric pressure ok. So, therefore, q 2 q 1 P exit equals to 1 atmospheric pressure and P the temperature more or less it remains constant at 27 degree centigrade. So, these are the data which has been provided to you ok. Q 2 is provided, Q 1 is provided and it discharges at a pressure of at, at an atmospheric pressure at a temperature of 27 degree centigrade this is also given. So, what you are required to find out? You are required to find out the exit velocities u 1 f, u 2 f and the pressure P i in the tank ok. P f equals to 1 atmosphere it is given. Just this much is given, nothing else is given. How to proceed? For do, for, for do you suggest? How should we proceed to <coughs> do this particular problem? See, if you go through the problem very well, you will find that in the present form, the problem cannot be solved just like that. Because in order to solve the problem, we first have to know how the two phases are mixed together and what is the flow pattern under which it is flowing inside the nozzle. Just if it would have been only water flowing or only air flowing, we could have done this problem. But since in this particular case it is an air water mixture flowing, so therefore before we proceed what we are supposed to know? We are supposed to know that how the two phases have been mixed together and what is the flow pattern that is being exhibited in the nozzle. Unless that is given we cannot solve the problem. So, what we can do? Under the present circumstances we can take the two extreme conditions. What are the two extreme conditions? One is the two phases are intimately mixed with one another and they are so well mixed that it becomes a homogeneous flow and a homogeneous mixture flows out through the nozzle. This is one extreme. What will be the other extreme? The other extreme is going to be that the two phases they do not interact at all at the interface and they flow in separate layers through this particular nozzle ok. These two can be the two extreme cases ok, 
So, what we can do? We can take up this problem, we can solve it first for two phases flowing separately or we can solve it first by assuming that the two phases are flowing as horizontal flow. We can find out the pressure in the tank and the exit velocities. Then we can solve the same thing by considering that the two phases are under separated flow conditions with minimum interactions at the interface. Wall shear stresses can be neglected probably in the problem also it will be specified wall shear stresses can be neglected. Okay. So, therefore, before doing anything for suppose the problem of this sort is framed. So, therefore, you have to first decide the conditions under which it can be solved and then taking up the individual conditions you have to solve the problem. Is it clear to you? So, for this particular case what we can do? We can solve the, for the problem for two cases. One case is large forces. between phases which suppresses relative velocity. What does this mean? That between the two phase, uh, phases such large forces are, uh, forces are acting that they suppress the relative motion. What does it mean? What does this sentence mean? Homogeneous flows. Okay? Or in other words this means that the two phases are under homogeneous flow condition. What is the next extreme that we can we can assume? No forces acting between phases. Naturally, when no forces will be acting between phases, they will separate out and they will be flowing in separate layers, is not it? So, no forces acting between phases. So, these are the two cases. This is the separated flow model. So, these are the two cases for which you can solve it. Now, let us take the first case when there are large forces acting between the phases. I will not be doing the whole thing, I will just be giving you the, uh, the hints of how to solve it. So, that you do it, come to the next class with the answers and then only I am going to discuss certain other things which I have to tell you relating this problem. So, when the large forces acting between the phases, what can we assume? We can very well say that u1, u2, they are the same, no slip condition and this is equal to j. Okay, the volumetric flux which is equal to q 1 plus q 2 by a, q 1, q 2 are already given correct. So, therefore, from this what do we know? We know that if you see the homogeneous flow model there you would find that minus d p d z was equal to a gravitational pressure gradient plus your frictional pressure gradient plus your acceleration pressure gradient. Now, in this particular case both these cancel out. So, therefore, your minus d p d z would be equal to minus d p d z acceleration. What was the expression of this particular case? This was nothing but g d u d z if you remember. Okay, this was equal to minus d p d z in this particular case. Okay, or in other words this g was nothing but equals to this was g 2 phase rho t p u t p d u t p d z yes or no agreed. So, therefore, in this particular case we found that assuming it see since the densities are more or less constant and it has been given and the pressure is not expected to fluctuate more much. So, you can see you might be given such problems in your exams where maybe you have to make rational assumptions and then you have to progress depending on what type of assumptions you are made. Maybe if the, even if the assumptions are wrong, but if the logic is correct also you will be evaluated. So, remember this thing it will be much more analytical as compared to anything else. Okay. So, therefore, under this circumstance we can assume that it is incompressible flow because water is anyhow incompressible. Here for such a small pressure drop it is going to be incompressible. Okay. So, for incompressible flows what we can write? We can just integrate this equation and we can have it as half rho t p u t p square is equal to delta p rho t p you can very well find it out u t p also you can find it out or else you can make you can you can make this in a much more friendly form what is it you can write it down as half rho t p u t p into u t p this is equal to delta p what is this rho, rho u equal to g so therefore this is nothing but half g j 
or GTP, JTP, yes or no? So, therefore, GTP is nothing but equal to your WTP by A or W1 plus W2 by A, JTP is nothing but Q1 plus Q2 by A. So, we can very well find out JTP, GTP and we can find out delta P. We know the final pressure as one atmosphere, so we can find out the initial pressure very simple problem. For the second case, this was for the first case. For the second case, what we are supposed to do? Second case already we have derived the equation. Okay. So, the equation was <coughs> minus d p d z was rho 1 u 1 square by 2 equals to rho 2 u 2 square by 2, is not it? In this particular case, we know what is u 1 equals to j 1 by 1 minus alpha. Agreed? this is nothing but q 1 by a into 1 minus alpha. Same thing u 2 this will be equal to j 2 by alpha fine. So, instead of u 1 square rho 1 u 1 square what can we write? We can write it as rho 1 j 1 square by 1 minus alpha equals to rho 2 j 2 square by alpha sorry. Can we write down this particular equation yes or no? So, once we can write down this equation, we can find out alpha as a function of rho 1, rho 2, j 1, j 2. Can we do this? Rho 1, rho 2 you already know air water. Okay. This is 1000 kg per meter cube and rho 2 you can take it down as 1.4 kg per meter cube. Okay. J 1, j 2 you can find out. So, you can find out an expression of alpha using this particular equation. Once you can find out the expression of alpha, then once you know j 1, j 2, from j 1 you can find out u 1, from j 2 you can find out u 2, moment you know j 1 alpha and j 2 alpha. Okay? You can find out u 1, u 2, once you can find out u 1, u 2, these are u 1 f, u 2 f, because u 1 and u 2 initial was 0. Correct? So, from there you can find out u 1 f, u 2 f. Once you know these two from using this equation, you can find out delta p. Agreed? So, in the next class, I would like you to come, uh, come up with values of u 1 f, u 2 f as well as delta p both for large forces such that the, it suppresses relative motion and both for almost no forces such that there is lot of relative motion. Under both the conditions, I would like you to sol solve it and then come up with the answers. Once you come up with the answers, I will be discussing why I have given you this problem and then we will proceed for discussing the empirical techniques for wall shear stress and so on and so forth. So, next class, please come prepared with the problems or rather please, please do the problem and come with the answers so that we can make further discussions. Okay? So, thank you very much.